God continues to disturb us. Reminds us to disturb us. So that in disturbing us, we are called to mission. What am I going to do with you the whole day today? My, my, my topic is really concerns in terms of uh, issues that the church is facing in terms of ethics. I'd like to share as part of our method, Global to National. And I'm using this book written by a man who is known by all of us because he's part of EWKN, the future church. This one. I'd like you to be aware of the trends so that we are adept to the trends. So what I did was to summarize this. After this, I will talk about national issues, particularly governments war against illegal drugs, and how to respond proactively, and how does the church today respond to it. Respond to it in terms of the compendium of the social doctrine of the church. Social principles found from Rero Novaro to Laudato Si. Ten groups. I have handouts for that. In fact, I have three sets of handouts. Ten groups. The ten groups I teach at San Carlos Seminary because I teach Catholic social teachings. However, later on, I hope we have time, I will talk about this book written by Richard Hula regarding sexual ethics among religious and clergy. How to live celibacy. Because the foremost issue right now is celibate, chaste living. Okay? That will be asked. Revolutionizing the Catholic Church, John Allen. Okay? Magalo kayo, ah, reality checking. Don't take this as dogma. Don't take this as dogma. 21st century realities. A church dominated in the 20th century by the global north, meaning Europe and North America. That's what it's now Today finds two thirds of its members living in Africa, Ama? Asia, and Latin America. Catholic leadership will come from all over the world in this century to degree never before experienced. Projection, possibly the next pope might be African or Asian. Okay? Why? More Catholics coming from these continents, the poor South, they call it. A church's watchword after Vatican II was aggiornamento, meaning updating design to open up to the modern world. It's today officially reaffirming all the things that make it different.
movement from modernity. Its traditional markers of Catholic thought, speech, and practice, this politics of identity is in part a reaction against runaway secularization. The Church's primary interreligious relationship with the last 40 years has been with Judaism now finds itself struggling to come to terms with the newly asserted Islam. Reality checking, answer yes. There are Muslims in our dioceses now. And I told a meeting of professors in SDD, even Mary Health in San Fabian, with Archbishop So, even in the Immaculate Conception in Diginto, Bulacan, as well as San Carlos Seminary, I told during the meeting of the professors, sabi ko, we should make Islam a required course, not elective. Our future priests must know what Islam is all about. And if we're going to engage in OGF as catechetical directors and coordinators, I suggest a more in-depth study of how to deal with Islam as a world religion is a necessity. They are now increasing more than Catholics. A church that has historically invested a large share of its pastoral energy in the young now has to cope, beginning in the north, with most rapidly aging population in human history. Tumadami ang tumatanda. Ganun din sa mga congregations eh. Mas marami ang matatanda kaya sa mga bata. Sabi nga sa Manila kami, mas marami ang matatanda sa amin sa Archdiocese of Manila. Ilan lang ang yung clergy namin? 20? 20? Ano mo, let me scroll you. 3 years, wala kami yung ordination. Sa Manila. That's why Cardinal Chito has been telling us, campaign, campaign, campaign. So, ganun din sa religious, di ba? May mga congregations, kung ilang taon na walang novice. Pero ang pinatatayo ng mga religious ngayon ay Vigil House, free departure area. <laughs> Tama? Pero ang aralin nyo rin, yung mga edad ng mga katikista ninyo. <laughs> Pero ang mga naka-assign na katikita ng directors, mga bata, Tama? A church that has long relied on its clergy to deliver pastoral care and to provide leadership now has lay people doing both in record numbers and in staggering variety of ways. What does that mean? Lay empowerment. The power of the program known as BEC, especially in Mindanao. Dito sa aking parokya, buhay na buhay ang BEC. I have 56 BECs. Ang problema ko lang dito, how to build BECs are rock well. Why? Because they don't need each other. They're rich. Why? Because there's a basic uh, uh, requirement for the BEC. Eh? You need each other. The rich don't need each other. So, mahanap ako ng paraan para mag-BEC sila. Okay? So, that's an issue also. A church used to debating bioethical issues that have been around for millennia, like abortion, birth control, homosexuality. Now, you have this new world, cloning, genetic enhancement, transspecies chimeras. Ano yun? You mix an animal sperm with a human ovum. Chimera. You make a humanoid. Ano may patabi mo? Baka chimera na yan. In other words, there is what we call scientific advances. What is the response of bioethics? Not everything that is technologically possible is morally permissible. 
I repeat, not everything that is technologically, scientifically possible is morally permissible. At one time here in Rockwell, I talked about IVF. Why? Because couples here, some couples have approached me, mostly we're going to a hospital and we're going to have an IVF. Is there something wrong with that? After all, you know, there is a woman and a man who had an IVF and requested surrogate motherhood. Ilan na niya? Si Snow. Call na? Okay. Sabi ko, okay, let's go to in vitro fertilization. Aralin natin. Then let's go yung sa visa. Sabi nila, ano pala yun? Why? There are two ways by which you do fertilization. In vitro and in vivo. Pag sabi mong in vitro, ano yun? In the test tube. Pag in vivo, sa loob ng tiyan ng babae. What do you do? You, you, you try to extract sperm. Extract the egg. Alright? In in vitro, you fertilize the eggs with the sperm. In the test tube. Outside the womb, kaya in vitro eh. Now, all the fertilization, 7 to 8, are fertilized. So you have a fertilized egg. If you have a fertilized egg, that's a human being. Because humanization begins at the moment of conception. What do you think of? When does human life begin? When is the infusion of the soul that is immortal? At the moment of fertilization. When the sperm fertilizes the egg, it has become, it has become a human being. It, is, it looks like a dot, but that's a human being. It is, it's an examination, persona in actu. An acting person. Because everything about humanity is dead. Okay? Mayon. Okay, ito na. You have seven fertilized eggs. You only have to harvest one. And inseminate that one in the womb of the woman, the mother. What do you do with the seven? Or six? Discard. So, six abortions. Or, sabi na naman nila, Monsi, hindi naman daw eh. Ano gagawin niyo? Freeze. Ah, so is it freeze nyo? Hanggang kailan mo ipi freeze yan? Pag hindi doon nakaigi yung una, hindi naman daw. Sabi ko, hanggang kailan yan? But some of the experiences that they describe, so in just one second, the doctors have aborted six babies. When I mentioned that to a couple during counseling with me, they shivered. No, see, they did not tell us that. Well, I'm telling you, did you know? Because <laughs> before, before any procedure, you need to do informed consent. You have to sign. Hindi niya sinabi. Ibig sabihin, walang bioethics sa mga doktor na yan. Kaya medyo maingay ako ngayon. IVF, the procedure of IVF is abortive. Not contraceptive, it is abortive. A church's social teaching took shape in the early stages of the Industrial Revolution, now faces a 21st century globalized world populated by strange entities such as LNCs, multinational corporations, and intergovernmental organizations that did not exist when it crafted its vision of the just society. We're a global village. One of the challenges today in companies, including Rockwell, is strengthening CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR. And therefore, for instance, BDO, which is the richest now, you need to create what we call the C group of companies. And you need to create a foundation, a 
which part of the profit will have to be funneled there. And that becomes a tax shelter. Yun ang magandang ikonek ng catechetical ministry. Not under the guise of religious instruction, but under the guise of values formation. Because I'm connecting with them. Why? Because they can be a very big source of funds. If only we know how to talk to the presidents and the chairmen of the board of trustees. Pwede ang mag-recipient ang catechetical ministry. Especially if the board of trustees is made up of practicing Catholics. Possibilities? Yes. Kasi lagi tayo nagsasabi, walang pera, walang pera. Hindi, meron eh. Hindi lang na, we don't know where to tap it. Isa yun sa mga issues na dapat pag-usapan. To create a hub in which, in every diocese, there is a corporation that will use its CSR for values formation. Don't use Catholic, use the phrase values formation. A church whose social concern focuses almost exclusively on human beings finds itself in a world in which the welfare of the cosmos itself requires new theological and moral reflection. Are we the only humans in the world? The only creatures in the world? That's a big question now. There may be other beings in other galaxies that we see the world really as charged with the grandeur of God. That humanity is not the centerpiece of creation. Is that possible? Answer is yes. A church whose diplomacy has always been relied on the great Catholic power of the day is now moving in a multipolar world in which most of the poles that matter are not Catholic and some are not Christian. We don't talk about God anymore these days especially in first world countries. There is what we call gnomes. The U.S. Bishop Robert Barrow uses the word gnomes, N-O-N-E-S. Young people who do not have any religion. Gnomes. They're not affiliated with any religious institution. They're gnomes. They are what we call the new atheists. How do we teach that? The graduate now, Catholic school, at the Neo La Salle, pero atheist. Or what we call, ano? No. Eh kung sasamahan pa ng theology sa university na highly intellectual at yung mismo nagtuturo, hindi naman nagdadasal, so, it has become more of an academic exercise, passing a grade. That's why I question whether it is theology or catechesis. Because the, the goal of catechesis is the experience of God. Next, a church accustomed to thinking of the Christian other as the Orthodox, Anglicans, and Protestants today is watching Pentecostals march across the planet shooting up from 5 to 20% of global Christianity in barely a quarter century in part by siphoning off significant numbers of Catholics. The Catholic Church is itself Pentecostalized, though through the charismatic movement. Young people love to celebrate, and celebration is not entertainment. Nung sa araw, si Mayor B9, tradisyon nito, nagpapaglores di Mayo yon pumunta sa akin, yung mga taga Makati, City Hall. O senior, sa karangalan ko ng tatlong daong taon ng mahal na Virgen de la Rosa, nalaro nito sa simbahan ninyo, ang Flores de Mayo ang magsisimula sa City Hall, si Mayor Abi o Inando, pupunta ko sa inyo. May mga sagala ko ang bawat barangay sa buong City of Makati. Ha? Maganda yan, maganda yan. O so, ano, so, okay po yun. Sa first Friday po, alas 6, kung pwede daw po kayo magmisa, sabi ng opisina ng mayora. Sabi ko, ah, okay yun. Mm. Pero, may kahilingan ako. May prinsipyo ako. Ano po yun? Catechesis before celebration. 
yung mga magsasagala, ikakatikesis muna namin. Kung hindi, labas niyan, passion show. Sabi ko gano'n. Tanong ngayon yung gabasan, hindi ko kasi ginagawa yun, yung sinasabi ninyo. Ano po ba yun? Katikesis. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, hindi na ginagawa. Basta padala mo sila dito, lahat ng mga sagala at yung mga, eh, mga kanilang escort. Nando na. Okay. So, ano po tanong? Mga taga sa parokya kayo? Wala, hindi mo na alam. Alam mo yung isang sagot? What is your parish? Ang sagot pa naman sa akin, the feast. <laughs> Sabi ko, hindi parokya yon. Ang tawag ko doon, lumulutang na parokya. <laughs> Yan ang pagtitipo ninyo mga kabataan sa PICC, no, Iho? Sabi niya, opo, Padre, hindi parokya yon. Yun ay pagdiriwang ng nangisa. Saan ka nakatira? Why? Because the church is jurisdictional. Take note, ha? It is territorial. It is divided like, a, like an onion into layers. May diocese, may parish. Hindi ko naman din ang gagawin ni Kari, baka lalo ba dito. <laughs> diocese and parish. So sabi niya, eh, para niya hapiho ako. Eh, ba't natapot rin ito sa Makati? Itinungan mo ako, eh, so, so. <laughs> Ito pa, gulat-gula. O ikaw, Iha, sa kaparokya? Victory Church. <laughs> Atay mo. Born again eh. Iha, ha, hindi naman sa pag-aano, ha? Kasi hindi po parang tutol ang inyong simbahan sa ginagawa ito. Ha, mamaya sabihin na sumasabakan na sa mga Diyos-Diyosan. Nakagano'n siya gano'n. And they were not able to identify the parish where they belong. Siguro sa mga urban areas, sa probinsya hindi eh, no? At least may level may magkakilala, no? Di dito gano'n. So, nakatikay sa sin eh. Sa sinilay sa ibigay. At maganda. Ang i-download eh, humingi kami ng copy ng Monsignor Benko's article. Oh, you should have a copy. An in-depth theological study of Flores de Mayo and Santa Cruz. The differentiation between what a Flores de Mayo is and Santa Cruz, history and theology. Is it you? Yes! Pwede mo, it's under. Yan ang produce nyo kasi may nang tulong. Ang ganda! Kaya doon si ano, si Benko. Ilan niyo si Pastor Benko, no? Yes! For most theologian yun eh. Hindi yun ang ipinahagi. In other words, mas gusto ng mga kabataan ngayon, balik tayo dito, yung mga praise the Lord. Mga activities. Kaya nga, image-driven eh. Storytelling eh. Tama? Okay, next. Criteria for a trend. Criteria number one, the trend has to be global. Number two, the proposed trend has to have a significant impact at the Catholic grassroots. Okay, let's read through it. This is the criteria used by Allen. There has to be evidence that the official leadership of the church is engaged in the issues. So that's the third criteria. In other words, involve on bishops and priests. Fourth, trend has to have an explanatory power. Okay. I'll give you this copy. Okay. Fifth, it has to have predictive power. Okay. I'm just pre presenting to you the criteria. Kasi may criteria siya eh. Sixth, cannot be ideologically driven. It should explain what's happening in the Catholic Church. These are the ten trends. Okay? The 
till the time we have our break. Then friends. Okay? Friends. Why? Because it's happening now, in other words. Number one, a world church. In 2000, by way of contrast, there were slightly under 1.1 billion Roman Catholics in the world, of whom just 350 were Europeans and North Americans. The overwhelming majority, a staggering 720 million people, lived in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. Almost half of the Catholic total, over 400 million people, lived in Latin America alone. Projecting forward to the year 2025, only one Catholic in five in the world will be a non-Hispanic Caucasian. This is the most rapid and most sweeping demographic transformation of Roman Catholicism in its 2,000 year history. So, year 2000, top five. Top five, huh? Top five. Yeah. Top ten. Okay. Marami pa rin ang Europe. Tama? Yeah, no. Ang Philippines, ilan? Okay. 65. Okay? 65 million. Nag-research din ako kung ilan. Okay? So, sinasabi rin ng UP study, the 65 million, 60% uh, only go to church and continuously lessening every year. They're baptized Catholics, but they're not practicing. Yeah. Uh, projection na. 2050. Nasa na tayo niyan? Nasa sumalangit na wa. <laughs> <laughs> Brazil is still number one. Mexico, 132. Philippines, 105. Kasi patuloy naman tayo. We have 2 million baptisms every year. Kaya ang ratio is one priest for every 15,000 Catholics. Kaya sabi niyang si Isipi, nag-aaral, Kahit magpakumpisa itong pari ito, hindi niya matatapos sa 365 days, yung 15,000 na niya. Maaga ang buhay niya. <laughs> <laughs> Father, sumiba, sabihin niyo sa akin, talagang, it comes to a point that talagang ang pangalang isang, talagang, ano, no? Isang malaking paghamon. Talagang malaking paghamon. Pagbago ang ordained, excited, no? <laughs> Naghahanap ka pa, sino ka mag-umpisa na ako? Sige, sige. Kaya dito, pinapan na mag-umpisa na ako, mga bagong pari eh. Talagang gusto nila, three hours, four hours. Hala, sige, pinunta kayo. <laughs> o di kaya yung mga retirees na. Ang mga nagpapag-umpisa sa Kiyapo, yung mga retired priests namin. Tinadala ng wheelchair. Bubuksan yung pinto, tapos paubuin. O dyan ka na mo, senior, ha? Maya-maya, <laughs> after two hours, eh. Tapos na po, Father. Father. <laughs> Abay, kumisan ako, nakakatulog din, eh. Ako yun, ha? Ay, Father, tapos na po. Ah! Oo nga pala, ah, isang ama na. <laughs> Sa kabagi ng no, Maria. Eh, yun po tinatanong ko kanina pa. Ah, ah balikan nga uli na. Hindi <laughs> ba gano'n? Kayong mga katikalito directors, ba't nagpapapisa sa public schools? Ano? Masabihin niya, Father, uh, ilang sections, kung dating ko sa public school, ilang section, walo po. <laughs> Ito sa iyo ka na ang kapit. Ilan sa bawat classroom? Warenta po. Sabi naman ang isa, Father, may merienda naman dito. 
Eh ako naman, parang marami akong kasama. Nagbibigyan ako ng stipend for professors eh. Nagbibigyan ako ng stipend. Malaki. Okay. <laughs> Tatanong kayo, basta malaki. <laughs> Talagang ano, marami sila. Kaya lang, hindi ko mabigyan ng sarili ko. Pero kasi yung totoo si fathers, wala talaga ng stipend sa confession ha. At huwag niyong pagkahanapin ng mga katigisan. Magpapakumpasan ako kapag ako may stipend. Ihanap po ako ng stipend. Yung mga katigisan, magtitinda ng puto. Magtitinda ng mga katigisan. At tapos, para lamang makuha, nagalit si Cardinal Rosales noon. Ano itong narinig ko ng ilang sa inyo sinasabi ng mga katigista? Na maghanap ng pera para magpakumpisan. That is embarrassing. Fathers, you look for the money, not our catechists. Because in principle, you should not be given any stipend. Namumula, matanda. Pero talaga naman, malaking sakripisyo. Simula alas 8 hanggang alas 12. Uuhup. Lalapit pa sa iyo, puro uuhup pa. Kapag namumpisan, manig marahin ang mga Ano mo sa sabi sabi? Okay. Dali, ali ka dito. Kumo ko tissue. Singa. Nawakang ko pa, singa, singa. Iskulong laput-laput pa. Bata niya dito dito. Tapon mo yan. Bata ka na? Masyumpula ko tayo. Nasa pari. Simula ka na. Diba gano'n? Pero talagang sasabi ko sa sarili ko, hindi dapat iinit ang ulo kung nagpapakumpisan. Pag iinit ang ulo mo, tumayo ka muna, magpahangin ka. Kasi matutro mga bata. Hindi na ulo papalit iyan. Nung nangumpisa na, ano yan sa iyo, ino? Bendesyon na niyo ako, Padre, sa bakit ako'y nagkasala. Tapos yung mga bata na kapila na kaganan. Gumagod na naman ako. Hindi ba ganun? O hana. Nagnakaw po ako. Sabi niya, nagnakaw po ako. Naguguto po ako kaya nagnakaw ako. Nakipagbubugan po ako kasi binubuli nila ako. O, oh, nagkasala? Kung tutukusin, hindi pagkakasala yun. Great matter for knowledge for consent. The consent has been affected. What does that mean? I did not tell the boy, you did not commit sin. Masabi ko lang sa kanya, iho, alam mo, love ka ni Jesus. Proverbs na ko lang. Kinaganong ko, nag-feel at siya eh. O, pagkatapos nito, punta ka doon ha. Desal ka ng one our father. Our funding. Tapos, alam mo na yung panalangin ng pagsisisi? Opo. Panginoon Jesus Christ, ako'y... May isa na naman, babae. Yung pala, pumunta ako doon. Kayo mga tigisa, ready na mga, ano, girls? Opo, ready na po sila. Doon sa blackboard, nakalagay, bendisyon na niyo ako, padre, <laughs> sa parat ako ay nagkasala. Tapos may blank. Wala na po ako kasala. <laughs> na lang, ganun siya. So yung mga bata, ganun. Sabi ng teacher, Oh! Tandaan niyo yan ako. <laughs> Ang ikumpisan niyo lahat ng mga kasalanan laban sa akin. <laughs> ano pa nangyayari sa akin po? Sabi ko, ano ba nangyayari sa akin? Sabi ko sa teacher niyo, umalis muna. Pinagkakot ang mga bata. Kabila na. Hindi na nangyayari ka dito. Nagyo na po sa ano, sa dentist office. Pinakaupo ako doon sa ano, sa... Gusto ko hindi na nagsiyan. Nagsiyan, 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 n
yung bata na kagano'n sa akin, ang mukha akong si Maria at si Bernadette. <laughs> Sabi niya gano'n, bendisyon na niyo ako, Padre, sabagat ako'y nagkasala. Ito po ang aking unang kumpisal. Wala na po ako sa <laughs> Memorize ka, pero walang kasalanan. Sabi ko, ay, hindi pwede. May kasalanan. <laughs> Ganun, di ba? Joy talagang magpakumpisahan. Di ba, Father Timex? <laughs> Alam mo, pag ikaw'y nagpakumpisahan sa public school, parish priest na parish priest ka. Kurang-kura ang dating na. Ayan, no? Oh, sana. Oh. Ilan ang Euro? France at Italy na lang. Yung Italy, nandun yung mga madre. Oh. Maraming Africa na, di ba? Congo. Number two, second trend, evangelical Catholicism. Clear embrace of traditional Catholic thought, speech, and practice, the usual word for which is orthodoxy. <coughs> Eagerness to proclaim one's Catholic identity to the world, emphasizing its implications for culture, society, and politics. Faith seen as a matter of personal choice rather than cultural inheritance. Take note, the word is choice. I choose to practice Catholic. Okay? Evangelical Catholicism. Sabi nga ni Cardinal Chito sa amin, anong ginagawa ng kirikma na hindi natin ginagawa sa mga parokya? Bakit sila magtatrabi ng pagkalayo-layo? Makarating lang doon sa PICC. Pero kapitbahay nila ay parish. The following four examples illustrate how the evangelical press for affirmation of traditional Catholic identity, liturgy wars, Catholic education, priestly identity, theological clarity, Christology, and ecclesiology. Alam mo, isa sa mga dapat harapin ng CBCP, ano ba talaga? Luluhod o tatayo? May nilabas na po. Nilabas na, parang nagawa. Huwag mo taka sa Imus, nakaluhod hanggang Amen. Huwag taka sa Manila, tumatayo. Ano ba talaga? Sa inyo, ano? Luhod, luhod kayo hanggang Amen? Sa Pablo yan? Kaya dito ngayon, sa sa, sa Cebu, ano? Luhod? Oh. Isayas, lahat luhod? Mindanao, luhod hanggang amin. So, mas maraming luhod. Alam mo sa amin ngayon, hindi mo pwede butuhan. Kasi talaga dito sa Manila, dapat ang tatayo. Kaya yung aking Sunday Mass ngayon, hindi maintindihan. Yung ilan nakaluhod, hindi pa nakatayo. Hindi ko naman pwede sabihan yung mga nakaluhod. Tumayo kayo! Hindi, kasi may karapatan sila ng luhod. Kasi nakakalito daw naman. Father, ano ba talaga? Ginaganoon ako. Sabi ko, hindi ko alam. Yun, sa amin ha, Manila ito. Manila, Pasig. Tumatayo. Kubaw. Tayo. O, tayo. Nova. Lord. <laughs> Imos. Imos, nakalugod eh. Hanggang kami. E nagbigay ako ng retreat sa isang kongregasyon na madre. Sabi ko, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Kalahati na katayo, kalahati na katayo. <laughs> Sabi ng mga mati, ano ba tayo doon? <laughs> Sabi ko, where are we? Imos, so kneel. Continue kneeling. Right? Next. Trend, Islam. Take note. The eruption of Islam into global Catholic consciousness. There are 2.3 billion Christians and 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. Representing more than 50% of the human family. 
Islam represents competition for converts, social influence, and political power in the parts of the world, such as Sub-Saharan Africa, Indonesia, and the Philippines. We really have to have a formation on Islam. Be ready also. So that is a trend. World's largest Muslim nation as of 2007. Indonesia, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and Egypt. Largest. The Turkey, Nigeria, Iran, Morocco, Algeria. Alam niyo, nag-mission ako sa tatlong lugar kasi may students sa kaya kapuchins. I was in Oman, Dubai, and Qatar. I was there for a month preaching. Grabe! You know the people noon show in Dubai is Filipino, Archbishop Padilla. And we were eating lunch together with Bishop Paul Hinder, the Bishop of Arabia. And sabi niya, you know Jerry, fascinating are the OFWs. They are really the missionaries. Sabi ko, why Bishop? The Simbang Gabi here. Simbang Gabi, Jerry. Why? What happens in Mangabi? That is December 15 to December 23. You know how many Filipinos attended the Simbangabi at 8 o'clock? 35,000 every night. Up to the footbridges, up to the streets, the football field was overflowing with Filipinos. The National Guard had to come in to put order. But you know what is more fascinating is this. The Filipinos arrive, the place is clean. The Filipinos clean, <laughs> the place is cleaner than before. Sabi ko, ano yung, ano yung, ano yung, bisha? Sabi niya, tapos ang tatawa siya sa akin. Kagulat-gulat, ano? Opo, kagulat-gulat. Malinis ang Pilipino rito. Alam mo talaga kapag nasa ibang bansa ka, matino ka. <laughs> Tama. Yes. Kaya takot matipor. <laughs> Oo, oh, oh, pero fascinating. Alam mo, fathers, uh, sisters, I think we really have to go for agentes. Kailangan nila. Yung kapuchin doon na kaysa isang chaplain, sabi niya, ako'y hilun na. Monsignor, estudiante ko yun eh, Father Chito. Why? We are required to be here in our office from 8 o'clock till 4 o'clock. Why? Counseling. Ang daming nakapinang mga Pilipino gusto makipag-usap sa family. Kailangan ng pastoral workers. Kailangan ng mga madre doon. Kaya ang point ko, bakit tayo nagsisiksikan dito? The wave now is agentless. Kaya yung sabi ng mga bishops, oh, Jerry, ha? 500 missionaries, ha? By 2021. Baka naman ang patatay ng 2021 yung mga retired teachers na magaan, sasakay ng Philippine Airlines. Kawilchen. Kawilchen. Right? Number four, new demography. In the first half of the 21st century, population will grow across most of the global south and fall in most of the north. More than 95% of the world's population increase will happen in developing countries, nearly all in rapidly expanding urban areas. So near center consequences, networks of care in churches, parish nursing, demographic dimension of social justice, making intergenerational peace, a crisis in church pensions, growth in elderly ministry, increase in lay vocations. Okay? Consequences. Okay. Next. Expanding lay roles. Since there are few priests, we need more lay people. Lay missionaries are scattered to the four corners of the earth, teaching, healing, and providing witness to the gospel. 
say yes, well, we really have to prepare. Good catechists will have to be sent abroad for a limited time of around two, three years. And who will pay for them? The receiving church. But they do not lose their employment in the sending church. They're still your employees. Pwede yun. Pinagawa yung ibang diocese, may system diocese connection na three years yung mga diocese at priest mo punta sa that's a relationship between, for instance, the Diocese of Imus and the Archdiocese of Vienna. May isang parokya na hawa ang Imus sa Vienna. Nagpapadala ang bishop dito, si Bishop Ray, na pare doon every three years. Kasi wala nga silang vocations. Expanding lay roles. Driving force, free shortage is number one. <coughs> Next, number six, biotech revolution. Scientific understanding of the mechanics of human, animal, and plant biology. So the issues they raise are mid-ventingly new. 